As air conditioning contractors, there's opportunities that we get when we change out a new system that we don't often get to drastically change the airflow and the efficiency of the unit and the home itself. So in this video, I wanna go over what you can ask your air conditioning contractor to make sure you're gonna get the best unit installed and the highest efficiency from the system. And we don't often get the chance to do some of these upgrades because when the unit is already installed, the access can be very difficult and it could be a lot harder to do these retrofits on an existing unit. So it's important, you may only get one chance to do these upgrades if you replace your unit every 10 to 15 years. And so it's very important that you ask your AC contractor to do these upgrades because they really do help. The first upgrade we should do is adding a plenum. Now a plenum just transitions from your unit to the ductwork and it gives you the most volume of air. A plenum allows for more direct and easy runs. We call them actually home runs directly from the unit to each room in the house. Rather than having a bunch of Y splits that can get pretty messy and double back on themselves, having a plenum with direct home runs and dampers allows us to control the airflow much better and it gives you a larger volume of air going into and out of the unit. It allows you to hit the manufacturer specifications much easier even though you may have a five ton air conditioner, you may be actually only putting out four tons of air because your ductwork is sized wrong or there's restrictions in the lines. A plenum can help even out those kinks and give you the best static pressure for your unit. So you actually get all the air that you're paying for. Reusing the existing plenums is an acceptable practice, but the problem is when your AC system does not have an existing plenum to begin with and your AC contractor doesn't plan on installing one with your new unit. On every AC system, whether it's a split system with a condenser outside and the air handler or furnace in the attic or a package unit on the roof, all need plenums. And we prefer them be made of sheet metal rather than duckboard. Now, an important alert is if you have a package unit on the roof. A lot of times you have flex duct that goes straight up into the unit without a plenum. And it's pretty difficult to install a plenum on an existing unit. It's only when we have the unit off and the elbow totally gone that we can drop in new plenums pretty easily from the top down and then tap in your existing flex into the new plenum. This lets us tie in as many returns and supplies as we'd like. We get better control over the airflow and the airflow is so much better with that plenum in than before. You can ask your contractor if you have a plenum now and if you have a package unit on the roof, you can ask for a side-by-side -side elbow. Typically homes built in the 70s and 80s have twist or over-under elbows that will start fat and taper down so the supply and return are on the same stud bay. A side-by-side -side elbow starts fat and stays fat going into the unit where you have the supply on one stud bay and the return on the other stud bay. The problem with twist elbows is that it chokes off the airflow during that twist in the elbow, and they're notorious for low airflow going into the unit. If you have one of these systems now, you probably notice your filter has such a strong pull on it, or there's a, just a lot of suction at your return, and that's because your unit is trying to suck a lot of air through too small of a hole. And so it's just putting a lot of force through that little hole. You wanna enlarge in that hole. And we make the analogy of giving your home 10 straws to breathe through instead of one straw. Your unit will actually seem quieter because it's not gonna be trying to suck all that air through that one small point. And it'll work a lot more efficiently. You'll get a full amount of volume into the unit. I would be really wary of contractors that say, oh, you don't need a plenum, they don't do anything, or your airflow is good. We actually need to measure it to see what the static pressure is or how much restriction is on the the unit now. Sometimes I've seen twist elbows that actually did not need an extra return 
or an additional plenum or a side-by-side -side elbow. And we were able to save the homeowner a lot of money that way. But in the majority of cases, you do need an additional return, a different kind of elbow and a plenum but you never know until you test. As a general rule of thumb, it's a best practice to have a return plenum at the minimum though. The second thing that we need to do on our installations is seal the ductwork. Both the Department of Energy, our local utility companies, APS and SRP, say that leaky ducts can cost you $200 a year or more, and that's about 20% of your air that moves through the duct system just being lost because of bad installs. So even if you have a top of the line SEER 20 variable speed system, if you're losing 20% of your air right out of the gate, your unit isn't gonna operate like a 20 SEER system. It's gonna operate more like a 14 SEER system. One of the things that we look for to know if there's duct leakage is discolored areas on the insulation. If you see dark spots when you pull back the insulation from the ductwork, that's a spot where the, the air is passing through the duct and it's depositing dust. And over time, it'll leave these dark ring marks around the insulation. Another sign of leaky ductwork could be if you have rooms that are difficult to cool or they seem stuffy or dusty, if you have dust streaks around the registers or air that feels kind of lukewarm in the summertime, those are all indicators of duct leakage. And you would think that sealing ductwork during your install is a no-brainer, but somehow it tends to get overlooked more often than not, especially at the unit, which is the most important kind of leakage because it's under the highest pressure. I like using the analogy of having a high-efficiency AC system with leaky ductwork is like driving a Prius with a hole in the gas tank. You'd be actually better off saving thousands of dollars purchasing just a standard basic AC system, a 14 sear system, but sealing the ductwork really well rather than getting a top of the line 20 sear system that's going to set you back $6,000 more but leave your ductwork leaking. In Arizona, our guidelines are to use mastic and mesh rather than tape. The tape tends to wear out in the heat or use a process called aero sealing to seal the ductwork from the inside if you have a flat roof or a metal trunk ductwork on a ranch style home. An important consideration is if you have a vertical unit in the garage or in a closet, this is another rare chance that we get to seal these platform returns that the unit sits on. The platform return is basically a framed in area that is acting like your return, sucking the air up into the unit. And typically framers will frame these out and put drywall on them, but they won't seal them. And so often there's direct connections from the platform return right up into the attic or outside space. And these platform returns are notoriously leaky. It's nice when you have the unit off, we can climb in these platform returns and seal them up. It's actually a lot easier than doing it with an existing home because we have to cut the drywall to get in and then you're dealing with a drywall repair after the sealing is done. So when you're interviewing contractors, you wanna ask how they sealed the ductwork and they should be using mastic and mesh tape, not aluminum tape or aluma grip. And also to be super savvy, you could ask them how they're gonna seal the bottom of the plenum connections. These are typically the hardest areas to reach and the most common missed areas. Number three, the third important upgrade to do when installing a new unit is putting in an additional return. Now, the rules of thumb would be a five ton unit needs a 22 inch size flex, a four ton AC system needs a, at least a 20 inch flex, a three ton AC system needs at least an 18 inch flex, and a two ton system needs at least a 16 inch flex. These are general rules of thumb. It's always nice to measure during our energy audit and actually see what the numbers say, if your existing returns are enough, or if there's too many kinks or restrictions in the ducts that we need to straighten out or add a second return. And going back to the first upgrade, you need a plenum on the return side before we add additional returns. Because if you keep the same size hole going into the unit, but just split it into two smaller ducts, you're not actually increasing the volume of air that goes into the unit. You're just dividing what you already have into two different areas. We actually wanna increase the size going into the unit, which is what the plenum is there for. 
If you have a package unit on the roof, you do not want to use your existing roof jack if you have that over under or twist elbow. You need to change the elbow to a side by side and then put your plenums in before you add new returns. Generally, you can't go wrong by adding more returns. We actually say that you can never have enough returns in your home. But you do want to be careful installing returns in bedrooms because you could easily cause an imbalance in the system, making your AC unit work harder and increasing the temperature differences throughout those rooms. You would actually, if you put too big of a return in a bedroom, you'll cause a negative pressure in that room where the door will get sucked open and the supplier doesn't have a chance to fill up and cool the room like it's supposed to. And generally, we want them in open areas of the house unless they measure your room pressures and they're at least 15 pascals or more, then we give a green light to adding a return in a specific bedroom. The fourth essential upgrade every AC contractor should do is air balancing. This is really important if you have temperature differences in each room, if you have a hot room in the summertime or cold room in the winter. Adding air balancing dampers are really easy to do, especially if you're installing a new plenum. And then you get better control over the airflow to push more air to those hot or cold rooms. A lot of times, inexperienced techs will say that you need a new return in the room to help cool that hot room. And we've only seen this helps 20% of the time. Air balancing dampers are the best way to cool a hot room because you're adding more air to the room. If you have hot rooms or rooms that get too much airflow and another room that doesn't get enough, often a new AC system won't fix that problem alone. You need to do an air balancing with that. And a lot of times contractors will just leave your existing ductwork the exact same way it was and attach the plenum to the new unit. But if your ducts aren't sized and relocated or balanced right, your home's going to have the exact same airflow problems just with the new unit. So those are recommended upgrades that everyone should be doing when you install a new system. If you've done any of these upgrades, let us know in the comments below and the effect that they've had. This is David Burns with Green ID, wishing you happy savings.